Hi everyone, it's Kara Wedby with Simply Magical Vacations by Kara, your favorite magical vacation specialist, coming to you live from a Spring Hill Suites in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Thanks to Marriott. Yay! Um, this lovely suite sleeps five. Actually, you could probably sleep six because the pullout bed here could sleep too. So. <laughs> Anywho, I am here because my son had a doctor's appointment at Scottish Rite today for a gait study a year after one of his surgeries that he had last year, and he's doing good, so we just finished with that, and so we came here last night and then um, did that this morning, and then we just got back from Hotel Transylvania 3 summer vacation, and I got these toys for being an AMC Premier Stubbs member. There are four, so I'm going to open them up. They're mystery squishy toys for movie characters from Hotel Transylvania 3, so I'm gonna open those. But yeah, we just got our tickets today and they were $3.99 a piece. I have to say, AMC is doing some amazing deals with their movie tickets and I highly recommend them. They are wonderful. Oh, I got Drac. <laughs> Drac's the first one. He's a squishy toy. See, they're squishy. <laughs> so that's one of them. And I just got these with my $3.99 piece movie tickets for being an AMC Premier Stubbs member. So they sent me an email. They're like, if you go opening weekend, you'll get these toys. <gasps> Another Drac. You know, if I get three, each kid can get one. Let's see. Another Drac. I don't say blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Who else did we get? Who else did we get? <laughs> oh, this one's different. It's Blobby. Blobby. <laughs> and he's squishy. And he looks like he's listening to some headphones with his sunglasses on because their summer vacation was on a cruise ship, which I can book. <laughs> and then finally, let's see who's in this one. <gasps> yes. Another drac. That means each kid gets one, and I don't have any fighting. All right, three kids, three dracs. We're good to go. And I'll keep Blobby for myself. <laughs> okay, so those are my toys I got from the new movie I went to see today, Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation. Um, this is a Sony Pictures movie, and it was rated PG as far as I could tell. Um, but what I liked about this movie that I did not like about Incredibles 2 was that this movie had no cuss words. There was no bad language. There was no taking the Lord's name in vain. There was no um, sexually explicit content. There was no inappropriate content. Thank you, Sony, for doing a PG movie that is for kids, that is friendly for kids to see. I cannot say the same about Incredibles 2, Disney. I'm not sure why someone didn't review that that had children before that movie got approved, but I'm sorry to say that the language was not great in that one, and I felt like it was all adult content and just not made for kids. So Hotel Transylvania 3 gets my two thumbs up. Seal of approval for kids. It was a good movie. Now, if they're scared of monsters, that's one thing. <laughs> that's probably why it's PG. But these are friendly monsters, and, you know, see Blobby, he's so cute. <laughs> and it's a good family movie with Drac and his family on the cruise. And it's just really sweet. So um, there were good messages, good defeated evil. There was a lot of um, good solid family messages there. Family's the most important thing. There was a lot of good um, just, you know, just because somebody's different doesn't mean that they're evil or that they're scary or that you shouldn't be friends with them. So I loved it. It was a great movie. My kids loved it. We all laughed. It was really cute. And for a, you know, a sequel that's number three in a series, it was really good. So I recommend it. I liked it. It's PG again. So if you have younger kids and they're scared of these monsters, then you may not want to take them, but you won't hear any bad language. They even had a lady say, oh my gosh, <laughs> and not what the Disney movie said, which was, uh, repeatedly using the Lord's name in vain. So that is my spiel on Hotel Transylvania 3. I recommend it, even though it's PG. This one gets my seal of approval. And it was fun seeing it on Friday the 13th. <laughs> so it was cute. Um, and then I'm wearing my Haunted Mansion shirt for Friday the 13th too from the Waits World. Thank you, guys. So um, I think a movie, I recommend it. So if anybody has any questions about it, let me know, but it was really cute. Okay, so 
let's get to the news, shall we? There are new specialty drinks for Incredible Summer at Disney's Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom. And they are both versions of a punch, like a lemonade type thing, but they have dry ice in the bottom of the glass. So the drink fizzes, like it looks like it's, you know, smoky or something. I don't know. It's, it's special. So they have them at Cool Ship in Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom, and they're called Violet's Force Field Punch and Dash's Super Lemonade. Um, they're not cheap. So let me just say they're about $6.99 a piece. And to me, that's really expensive for a lemonade. So if you've got the Disney um, dining plan and if these are snack credits, I would maybe use that as a snack credit because that's pretty good value, you know. <laughs> but if you're paying out of pocket, I don't know that I would do that for this. It's just a lemonade and it's apparently a very small amount. And of course, they couldn't leave it alone. They had to put boba balls in it. So they both have at least blueberry boba balls in them. And then the um, Violet Punch has uh, blood orange boba balls as well. So Dash's Super Lemonade is a lemonade with Hawaiian Island and a blueberry boba ball in it. And it has dry ice in the bottom. And then um, they said that the drinks taste okay. I mean, they're refreshing. Um, and they have, you know, the cool effect. But they're expensive. And they're hard to drink the boba balls. And they don't put that many in them compared to the picture. So <laughs> all that to say, it's really expensive lemonade. And if you want a lemonade, there's some cheaper ones at other places in Magic Kingdom. So unless you just really want the dry ice effect, probably not necessary. All right, the next one, Disney Springs news. Get your groove on at STK Steakhouse Orlando as a DJ spins top 40 tunes and classics from decades past from 9.30 p.m. to 2 a.m. every Thursday through Saturday night. Now, last week on the news, we talked about the new Disney Springs late night type things that they were coming out with. STK is apparently joining in on the fun, and that is their event Thursday through Sunday night. Um... Christmas in July, the Disney Parks vlog has shared a glimpse into some of the festive happenings that you can experience this holiday season at Walt Disney World. First, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam, and Sunset Seasons Greetings will both be returning to Disney's Hollywood Studios, and we'll get to see them. My kids are swimming, so they can't hear me. We'll get to see them. Um, and our surprise vacation. So it's exciting because this year, the season Sunset Seasons Greetings is on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood Studios, which is where the Tower of Terror is at the end of that street. So they project all these like Christmassy type scenes and, and images, and they do a projection show that lasts like 15 minutes every so often all night long on the Hollywood Tower of Terror. And then they've got snow that falls, and they have like these lasers that they're introducing this year that's gonna be a part of that show. So I can't wait to see it. So that's what that is. And then the Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam is the projection show they put onto the Chinese theater with the fireworks um, at the end of the night. And it's a Christmas themed show based on prep and landing, you know, the two little elves um, from Disney's prep and landing. So that's what that's based off of. Um, and last year, what they did was they had the Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam show, but then they also did the Star Wars show like later on in the evening too. So I don't know if they'll do that again this year. They haven't said, but that is what is going on for the holidays at Hollywood Studios. And they're adding something this year at Hollywood Studios. Since Toy Story Land is now open, it will be decorated for Christmas. So I can't wait to see what they do there. <laughs> Okay, at Animal Kingdom, which Animal Kingdom hasn't had anything in a couple of years. They used to have a Christmas parade, but then they did away with it. So now Animal Kingdom this year is going to do an edition of Diwali, which is a holiday festival of lights in India. It's going to be added to the new live Up a Great Bird Adventure show. This edition is set to begin on November 8th. So I'll have to check that out too. That'll be fun. Um, let's see what else. Haunted Mansion at Disneyland will close on August 20th to begin its transformation into Haunted Mansion Holiday, which is the one where they do all the way through Christmas with Jack Skellington and the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay. So that's out in Disneyland. They do not do that in Disney World. And that's at the Haunted Mansion. They're calling this uh, at Walt Disney World, Joy Through the World. And you saw me put a picture of that up after I went to my training yesterday with Disney Destinations. Um, it starts November 8th. All of the holiday decor will be up by November 8th. Now, after October 31st, when they do the last Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party at the Magic Kingdom, usually overnight, they start transforming the park for Christmas. And some of the Christmas decorations are usually up the next day. But then it takes them a little bit to get everything out because they do wreaths that are Mickey-shaped and the 
big tree and all that kind of stuff. So everything officially starts November 8th. And I believe that's when the first Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party is. Um, so let me tell you what else is happening. Joy through the world, November 8th through December 31st and Magic Kingdom and the rest of the parks. Um, I've got a whole bunch of things that say the same thing. Here we go. <laughs> it's Christmas in July. Today we're announcing the return of the holiday season to Walt Disney World Resort. Starting November 8th, you will be able to celebrate this magical season with festive parties, captivating holiday decor, delicious treats, spectacular entertainment, and enchanting experiences that make this season one of the most wonderful times to visit the theme parks, resorts, and more. Don't forget the resorts because they have like the gingerbread houses on display and um, chocolate things that are Christmassy that they make things out of chocolate. <laughs> So it's fun to do a resort tour at the holidays as well. Um, let's see. Flurry of Fun comes back to Disney's Hollywood Studios with the return of Sunset Seasons greetings featuring impressive new laser effects and snow. <laughs> Holiday magic transforms the famous Hol Hollywood Tower of Terror with spectacular projections of beloved Disney characters such as Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and Olaf sharing their favorite seasonal stories. Another returning favorite is the nighttime spectacular Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. The new Toy Story Land is also getting special seasonal fun, including holiday songs on alien swirling saucers and more. <laughs> How exciting. Alien swirling saucers is getting Christmas music, too. Um, at Epcot, your clients will discover joyous holiday traditions of 11 World Showcase nations during Epcot's International Festival of the Holidays beginning November 18th. One of the favorite holiday traditions at Epcot is the Candlelight Processional, which I have my dining pack package booked for. And this year it starts performances on November 22nd, Thanksgiving Day. Usually they wait and start it like the week after. So exciting. Um, new this year at Animal Kingdom. Yay, I just said this. The magic of nature will receive a holiday touch with the inclusion of Diwali, the holiday festival of lights in India as part of the new live up a great bird adventure show. So Animal Kingdom's getting more than just the tree this year. That's exciting. There's even more holiday fun at the resorts across Walt Disney World with festive seasonal decor as well as life-size edible creations like at Grand Floridian. They have the life-size gingerbread house and you can buy shingles to take home and eat. <laughs> and at Disney Springs, your clients will find the perfect destination for holiday shopping, dining, and entertainment with the chance to experience holiday magic along the way. Now, what's cool about Disney Springs is they have a Christmas tree trail where all the trees are decorated um, like different Disney animated movies but they also have a new thing that they started last year and it was a stitch scavenger hunt and you can get a prize at the end of it and at Epcot they have a Chippendale ornament scavenger hunt and you can get a prize if you complete the whole scavenger hunt as well so there's lots of fun things to do with your kids as you're going through Disney Springs or as you're going through Epcot for the holidays um, and then also in Epcot all the different countries tell their Christmas traditions and Christmas stories um, as part of their holiday booths for the International Festival of the Holidays and they obviously have food booths that go along with that and have their traditional holiday foods as well um, okay Avengers Infinity War is releasing on July 31st digitally and on August 14th in Blu-ray and 4K HD. So if you're wanting to buy that movie, if you haven't seen it yet, <laughs> it's PG-13, but really, really amazing. And if you like the Marvel Universe at all, then you're going to want to see that movie because um, not all your characters will still be alive after it. All right, so the next bit of information is... Universal Orlando Resort has announced what their holiday season is going to look like this year. So it's going to be taken Whoville's Christmas charm and cheer during the Grinchmas Hula Day Spectacular, a live retelling of the classic holiday tale starring the Grinch. Or you can dine with the green one himself during the Grinch and Friends character breakfast. That's at Universal Orlando. And now from November 8th through January 6th, you can experience a... Uh, Oh, that's the Flurry of Fun at Hollywood Studios. Sorry about that. I thought that was still Universal. Um, let me go back to what Universal is having. They also have a Macy's parade, or they call it a parade, holiday parade featuring Macy's. But all the different uh, Universal characters are dressed up and in this parade. And, of course, Santa is at the end of it. And then they have holiday lights on the Hogwarts castle um, in Islands of Adventure. They do a holiday light show on the castle for Christmas and then they've just started or they're starting, they're testing still the new cinematic universe um, nighttime water 
show, water projection show at Universal Studios Orlando um, in the in the Central Park area of New York in Universal Studios. So that show may get a holiday overlay too. So it's supposed to start here in the next couple weeks and then they'll probably do a holiday overlay for that as well. So that's what's going on at Universal Orlando for the holidays. And of course, at Disney World, you can meet Santa Claus and Santa Goofy at Hollywood Studios as well. And I believe there's a Santa Claus meet and greet in Disney Springs as well. And it's usually at the end of the Christmas tree trail. All right, Festival of the Holidays at Epcot runs November 18th through December 30th. This fan favorite celebrates holidays and festivals from all over the world with holiday kitchens serving up holiday eats from around the world. And of course, Candlelight Processional is November 22nd through December 30th, and dining packages are now available to book. Just let me know if you want one. They are two table service credits on the dining plan, or as I recommend, you could pay out of pocket. I got a breakfast at Ailing Compass for mine. We have no idea who our narrator is, and I don't really care. I just want to see it. So <laughs> I'm excited about it, but we got a breakfast booked for ours. Um, let's see. Yes, Chippendale's Christmas tree spree is now coming back as well for the holiday season at Epcot. Yeah, and we talked about Disney Springs, Stitch's holiday gift hunt. Disney's Yacht and Beach Club, the Contemporary, and Disney's Grand Floridian are some of the resorts you're going to want to visit to see their chocolate and gingerbread house creations. Also, for the new year, if you want to ring in the new year at Disney World, there are two New Year's Eve celebrations at Disney's Contemporary Resort this year. One is a Pixar party and New Year's Eve celebration. That's obviously the family-friendly one. Then the other is Disney Countdown to Midnight. That's the more adult one. Both celebrations include food, entertainment, refreshments, and a viewing area of Magic Kingdom's fireworks. And those are bookable online this year as well. So again, if you're going to be there then and you want to go to one of those, let me know. Le Rendezvous Gourmand de Disneyland Paris is confirmed to be returning for 2018. This is a celebration of the finest food and drink from France and new for this year, Belgium, Italy, and Spain. From the 27th of July to the 30th of September 2018 in Walt Disney Studios Park. And then this is in Disneyland Paris. So um, if you're going to be in Europe around that time, 27th of July to September 30th, it's like their own food and wine festival, basically, like we have at Epcot. But it's all French, Spanish, Belgium, and Italian booze. All right. Um, this happened this week. So you know that um, Disney is buying Fox or 21st Century Fox, or they're trying to. Um, a shareholder this week of Fox was trying to prevent that acquisition and filed a lawsuit, so we'll see if that goes anywhere. Um, the Prince Charming Regal Carousel at Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World is currently closed for refurbishment. It was open, and they were like they had scrim up and were still letting people ride it while they were doing the refurbishment, but not so much anymore. So now it's closed for refurbishment. It's scheduled to be closed. It started July 10th through July 31st. So they say it's supposed to reopen actually on July 31st. Um, that's the carousel in Fantasyland at the Magic Kingdom. The one in Disneyland is called King Arthur's Carousel. All right, here are some refurbishments that are going on that you need to know about. I actually have clients going during the Be Our Guest refurbishment, and they weren't able to get a reservation there, and this is why. Be Our Guest restaurant is undergoing a refurbishment August 20th through 24th of this year. Um, so just so you know, that's why you can't have one if you're going that week. Fairytale Fireworks, a sparkling dessert cruise, is going on hiatus from July 1st through October 20th. So if you're going any time during that time you cannot go on the fairy tale fireworks sparkling dessert cruise um liberty square riverboat is going under its refurbishment it actually started january 8th and it says through august 30th so maybe it'll be done soon <laughs> um prince charming regal carousel like i just said july 10th through july 30th Kringle a Bakery and Norway Pavilion in Epcot started its refurbishment on february 4th of this year and it says it's supposed to be done in summer of 2018 which is now <laughs> so hopefully it'll be done soon it has a little cart though out in front of norway to get all those favorite treats that people liked from that bakery um, until the bakery refurbishment is done um disney's hollywood studios disney junior live on stage closes september 1st to make way for the new disney junior dance party now um the hollywood and vine disney junior character breakfast 
has switched out characters and that's what's going to happen in this show too so they have switched out their characters they no longer have handy manny they exchanged him for roadster or racing goofy racer racing roadster goofy <laughs> from the mickey mouse roadster racer show so that's who replaced handy manny and he's also replacing handy manny in the live dance party show that they're redoing starting september 1st so that show will be closed down and we don't know how long before the new show opens but we just know that there'll be the new characters i think vampirina characters Characters will also be in the new show. So if your kids like those Disney Junior shows, they won't be able to see the newer characters once this new dance party show reopens. But we know it goes down. The old show ends September 1st. Um, currently, there's no refurbishments at Animal Kingdom. Yay. <laughs> uh, Disney Springs, World of Disney Store, will remain open during construction. Um, that construction started in mid-February, and it's supposed to end sometime in the fall. We're not sure exactly when, but a lot of it's been refurbished and reopened, and the place that's closed right now is the is the entrance closest to Amaret's Patisserie. So um, the rest of it is open, though, that they just finished refurbishing. Um, Disney Water Parks, Blizzard Beach, is going on its annual refurbishment um, starting October 28th through January 5th of 2019. During that time, Typhoon Lagoon will be open. And just so you know, people ask, should we get a water park pass in, you know, December? <laughs> Yes, you can. And here's why. Um, first of all, the weather there is crazy, just as crazy as it is in Texas, and you just never really know what the temperature is going to be, but it could be all the way up to 80 in December, you know, or it could be down in the 50s. No one really knows. But regardless of what the outside air temperature is, Disney's water parks and then all their resort pools um, heat their water to 82 degrees and keep it 82 degrees consistently. So if you don't mind the cold air getting there, you can actually still swim at the water parks and this, this fall season it'll be Typhoon Lagoon that you can go to, which is my favorite, um, while Blizzard Beach is undergoing its annual refurbishment. All right, next, Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. The Children's Activity Center is permanently closing July 31st, and that's at every place, like the Polynesian, um, then I think Beach Club had one as well. So all the resorts that had a children's club, they're all closing July 31st for good. However, they have the thing that I booked um, in December for our kids to go to. It's ages uh three through 12 and it's called the Pixar play zone and it's at the contemporary in the conference center. It's $65 per kid. Um, and it includes a meal. They feed them dinner. The check-in starts at five. The actual events start at six, but you can drop them off as early as five. Once they're checked in, they go in there, they spend the whole night with like Pixar characters and they do it age appropriately. So even the 12 year olds are having fun. Um, there's like a, a, like a boxcar race that they make their own cars and race them with the cars characters. Um, there's crafts that they do. There's a dance party they have with Mr. and Mrs. Incredible. Um, there's Woody and Jesse teaching them how to be real cowboys and cowgirls. I mean, it's so much fun. I wish I could do it. And that $65 covers dinner plus the them taking care of your kids from 6 till 1030 that night. So that's when I booked Tim and I to go for our anniversary dinner at Victoria and Albert's because that's a minimum three hour experience. So while our kids are in the Pixar play zone, we'll be able to go on a date for our anniversary. So I highly recommend that. It's in a pilot period, they said, all the way through January 5th, and then they'll see if they're going to continue it. I hope they do. Um, but I booked, I booked ours for January 2nd. So if you'd like to do that, that's your option for kids' child care once these child care places close. And they were all $55 a kid. Um, and I think they fed them dinner as well. And it was roughly the same time period. So at least you have another option if you need it. Um, let's see. Jumbo House Room Refurbishment at Animal Kingdom Lodge, which is the main building. The main lobby is Jumbo House. Um, that is happening mid-August 2018 through fall of 2019. Um, they're refurbishing all the rooms and then Uzima Springs pool and Uzima Springs pool bar are being refurbished from September 4th of 2018 through December 4th. So I have people staying there the first week in December. They should be done with the pool refurbishment by the time you go. Yay. But if not, they are busing you. I have other people staying there in November. They are busing you from the Jumbo house location over to Kadani village to use their pool. So, um, and Wilkinum Lodge has two parts and the Kadani village part is all DVC rooms, but they also have pools with slides and hot tub and splash pad and all that kind of stuff on their side. So they will bust you over there if you want to use the pool while the Jumbo House one is under refurbishment. 
Disney's all-star movies is having undergoing a room refurbishment currently. We talked about that last time. They're going to look like the new refurbished pop century rooms when they're done. And then they started with all-star movies. That's from late February, 2018 through early 2019. And so once that one's done, they'll start with all-star music and then they'll do all-star sports. Disney's beach club resort children's activity center. Like we just discussed is permanently closing July 31st expansion of the conference center is supposed to be done October 4th of 2016 through late 2018. The portion of Stormalong Bay pool mid-August is going to be closed mid-August 2018 through fall of 2018 for its yearly refurbishment, but just a portion. That pool's massive and it's shared, they, they share it with the Yacht Club. So just a portion of it's going under refurbishment from August to fall of 2018. Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, Old Point, Port Royal Food Court, Shedders, Cabana Pool Bar, the Calypso Trading Post are all obviously undergoing refurbishment and have been since May 1st of 2017. But listen, it's all supposed to be done fall of this year. So fall of 2018 is when Caribbean Beach is supposed to be done, hopefully by the end of the year. So if you got a trip there for, you know, between now and then, the refurbishments may be done by the time you get there. Coronado Springs Resort is obviously also going under a huge refurbishment, but not nearly as, um, what's the right word? it's not nearly as intrusive as the refurbishments that are happening at Caribbean Beach. Like they're, all of their restaurants are still open during the refurbishment. So at Coronado Springs, hard goods refurbishment through summer of 2019, that means they're redoing the actual rooms, like the look of the room, the furniture, the bathrooms, they're putting in uh, these barn doors instead of curtains, no more shower curtains, they're barn glass doors, um, all that kind of stuff is happening at Coronado Springs. And that refurbishment is supposed to be done this summer of 2019. They're also adding a 15 story deluxe uh, suite concierge level tower of rooms. Um, let's see. The dig site, the lost city of Cibola pool, the volleyball court, the playground, the Iguana Arcade are all going under refurbishment September 4th of 2018 at Coronado Springs through December 12th of 2018. Um, that's the main pool, but they have other ones. Siesta's Cantina is going under refurbishment November or September 4th through January 5th of 2019. And then the Pepper Market, which will remain open during its refurbishment, and that is their quick service, which is an excellent quick service, um, is open now through summer of 2019 while it's undergoing its refurbishment. So you can still eat there. Um, Disney's Old Key West Resort, my home, my home resort, is undergoing room refurbishments from August 1st of 2017 through spring of 2019. They say that's supposed to be done in the spring. I don't know. <laughs> They're working on several buildings at a time and the rooms are gorgeous. I have seen the redone rooms at Old Key West and they are gorgeous. So hopefully they'll be done by spring of 2019. If not, hopefully pretty soon after that. Um, let's see, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Obviously, the Children's Activity Center is permanently closing on July 31st. The Tambu Lounge is going under a short refurbishment starting July 4th through fall of 2018. So it should be done in a couple months. But they will have a place to get those same beverages somewhere else in that area upstairs on the second floor of the main ceremonial house um, while it's under refurbishment. And then Disney's Pop Century Resort is obviously has been for a while going under a rooms and hard good refurbishments, meaning they completely redid all the rooms. Um, and that it started in February of 2017 and it's supposed to be done this summer, summer of 2018. So by the end of September, that should be done. Um, and I think most all of them are, if not all of them at this point. Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter. This started actually in January. Um, they started undergoing room refurbishments January 6th of this year, and it's supposed to be done this summer. So within the next couple months, all of the Port Orleans Fridge Quarter rooms will be refurbished. Port Orleans Riverside is undergoing room refurbishments starting spring of this year. So that started, and then they'll be done early 2019. I read this the other day. Port Orleans has 3,088 rooms. It is a big resort on that side. Now, French Quarter is smaller, more compact, but Riverside is bigger. Um, so that takes them a little bit longer to finish the refurbishment. So that'll be done early 2019. Soft goods refurbishment from July 2018 through December of 2018 for Port Orleans Riverside and a leisure pool refurbishment from July of 2018 through fall of 2018. Um, Disney Saratoga Springs, the Turf Club and Grill is having a refurbishment from late July 2018 through early August 2018. That's not going to last very long. And then Disney's Yacht Club is also expanding the convention center that they share with the Beach Club. And that started in August 4th of 2016. It's supposed to be done late this year of 2018.
All right, so that's the resort refurbishments going on right now and all the park refurbishments. Next bit of news, I just told you this, booking is now open for New Year's Eve 2019 parties at Disney's Contemporary Resort. There are two, the Pixar one for families and the adult one. Both celebrations include entertainment, music, food, and other refreshments, plus a viewing of the Magic Kingdom New Year's Eve fireworks to cap off the night. The Pixar's party is called a Pixar party and New Year's Eve celebration. It starts at 8 p.m. and goes through 12.15 a.m. This New Year's Eve, welcome in 2019 with a festive family-friendly frolic through some childhood joys during the Pixar party and New Year's Eve celebration at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Sarge from Pixar Animation Studios' Toy Story Films will welcome you as you arrive at the second floor of the resort. Once inside, you will discover spaces that have been transformed with scenes from beloved Pixar movies. Highlights of that evening include being enveloped in the worlds of various Pixar films like Inside Out, The Incredibles, Finding Nemo, and Up, including meeting some of your favorite characters. Kids' activities including boot camp with Sarge, Pixar face painting, and a balloon artist creating favorite Pixar characters. An interactive DJ spinning Radio Disney hits from Cars-inspired DJ rig, complete with tires and road signs right out of radiator springs. A delicious buffet dinner including Woody's favorite lemon thyme chicken breast, Wally's pan seared Mahi Mahi, Rex's Manhattan Filet, Sully's Beast White Cheddar Baked Mac and Cheese, Build Your Own Salad Options, Desserts, Kids Favorites Like Chicken Fingers, and more as part of their New Year's Buffet in the Pixar Party. And of course, a viewing of the famous Magic Kingdom New Year's Eve fireworks ends the night. Tickets for the Pixar One are $190 per person, and that includes taxes and gratuity. Disney's Countdown to Midnight is the more adult version of the New Year's Eve celebration at Walt Disney World this year at the Contemporary, and it's also from 8 p.m. to 12.15 a.m. This New Year's Eve, dress up and party during the Disney Countdown to Midnight, an evening of dining, dancing, and enchantment in the Fantasia Ballroom at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Come discover a world sparkling with magic, everything from a Mickey Mouse mirror ball to Disney character topiaries as you move and groove to the high-energy New Year's Eve bash band and a live DJ providing music all night long. Long. A Cheftainment station, Cheftainment, featuring a seasonal menu inspired by some Disney signature dining restaurants with a touch of Disney magic, a special appearance by Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, and at the end of the night, guests will be invited out to the Porta Cache where they will receive a champagne flute and welcome 2019 with a viewing of the famous Magic Kingdom New Year's Eve fireworks. This one, since it includes adult beverages, is $275 a person, which also includes taxes and gratuity. In addition to that, you can add on the Ink and Paint Club exclusive experience, which starts at 7 p.m. and goes to 12.15 a.m. as part of the adult party. So this is in addition to your ticket to the adult uh, New Year's Eve party. Offered only as a VIP enhancement to the Disney Countdown to Midnight Party and located adjacent to the Fantasia Ballroom at Disney's Contemporary Resort. The special reception begins prior to the opening of the adult party. And... At the Ink and Paint Club, guests will step back in time into a vintage Disney animation-inspired room with silver shivari chairs, metallic tables, and references to classic Disney animation filling the room. Ticketed guests can visit the lounge throughout the evening, starting with a featured reception from 7 to 8 p.m. Highlights of the special reception include photo opportunities with Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse with a unique Disney animation backdrop. A pianist providing live entertainment. Chef stations featuring king crab, tuna tartare, sheep's milk ricotta gnocchi, cocktails, champagne, cordials, and more, all included with admission. Reserved seating in the Disney Countdown to Midnight Party when it opens at 8. Disney Ink and Paint Club is only available as a part of an enhanced ticket that includes access to both the Disney Countdown to Midnight Party and the Ink and Paint Club for $450 total per guest. Access to Ink and Paint Club must be purchased concurrently with the Disney Countdown to Midnight ticket and cannot be added at a later date. Anybody want to take me with you? <laughs> All right, the new character dining experiences at the Disneyland Resort begin um, July 10th. Those began July 10th. We've talked about that. Mickey Mouse is going to Storytellers Cafe in the Grand Californian Resort um, in Disneyland. And then Donald Duck and his friends are joining him at the PCH Grill, which is in the resort we stayed at, Paradise Pier, um, as part of their character experience. And then Goofy's Kitchen is staying the same at Disneyland Hotel. So just wanted to let you know the change up in character dining there at Disneyland. 
All right, this happened this week as well. Bob Iger, the CEO of the Walt Disney Company, recently announced plans to develop a five-building parcel at 4 Hudson Square into Disney's new headquarters in New York. The company purchased the site from Trinity Church Real Estate at a $650 million price tag. The parcel, which allows for one large building, is zoned for 800,000 square feet and encompasses 1.2 million square feet of rentable space. The space is intended to become the flagship campus for WABC TV, ABC News, Live with Kelly and Ryan, and The View. Disney streaming services will also move to the new Hudson Square headquarters from its current Chelsea Market location. Good Morning America will continue to broadcast from Times Square. This announcement comes after the recent plans for Disney to sell its Upper West Side headquarters on West 66th Street and West End Avenue were announced. Silverstein Properties is purchasing Disney's former location for $1 billion sometime this month. Trinity Church is one of the largest property owners in the area and is redeveloping multiple nearby properties, such as one Hudson Square, and will become, which will become a Jackie Robinson Museum. Iger assessed the Hudson Square District as a dynamic, innovative hub for media, technology, and other creative businesses. He went on to call the move a historic step forward and that Disney is pleased and proud to be joining this exciting community. There are still no announcements as to when the deal will be finalized or when construction will start on the new headquarters. There you go. All right. A new deal has been announced for Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. Way to save money. All right. So pay attention. Um, and it began today, actually, Friday the 13th. So this is the Primed for Adventure sale. Uh, you get 50% off second guess. So it's basically buy one guest, get the second 50% off. Um, plus you get 25% off the third and fourth guest. Um, plus a bonus of up to $200 in instant savings and up to $100 uh, credit to spend at sea. And that is bookable starting today with Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. They also are giving you extra money if you book a holiday sailing, because if you book six months out, you get a hundred dollar resort credit. And then if you book a holiday sailing, you could save an extra 150 to $200 on that cruise as well. Also Royal Caribbean. Now we have a whole bunch of new iridescent snacks. <laughs> so the, I showed you the iridescent unicorn ears. They're the new, like kind of clear purpley looking um, iridescent colors. And they also have a spirit Jersey to match in Walt Disney world and Disneyland. Um, now they have made desserts to go with this trend because, of course, we can't just have the ears and the spirit jersey. We have to have the desserts that match. So one of the new iridescent desserts is this lovely mermaid cupcake. Now, this one is available on Main Street in the Magic Kingdom, and it goes fast. Once they sell out in a day, they are sold out. They don't make any more that day, and apparently they taste really good. So that's definitely worth a try for you. Um, let's see. We've got so many more here. So the first one is Epcot has a crisp rice treat decorated with a mini headband and an iridescent bow. This treat is at Fountain View Desserts. And here's what it looks like. Little mini bows with an iridescent bow rice crispy treat. That is at Fountain View in Epcot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are so cute. Um, in Disney Springs, the Ganachery, which is their chocolate shop there, has a unicorn ganache pop. This strawberry lemon ganache lollipop is dipped in iridescent pink chocolate and decorated to look like a unicorn. Those are at the Ganachery in Disney Springs. <laughs> oh my goodness, how cute. Okay, the next one. Oh, these are so cute. The next one is at Disney's Contemporary Resort. You can stop by the Contempo Cafe, which is the quick service restaurant there, for their iridescent cupcake. This confetti cupcake is filled with strawberry filling and topped with buttercream, then decorated with crispy pearls and a chocolate Minnie Mouse hat. And there she is. And the girl, of course, is wearing her iridescent spirit jersey to go with her new iridescent cupcake <laughs> from the Contempo Cafe. Got to get our models matching their cupcakes. Okay, this next one is at the Mara at the Animal Kingdom. It is a rhinoceros iridescent cupcake. So let me tell you what it has in it. Of course, Animal Kingdom, we got to have some animals in there. Um, so the rhinoceros iridescent cupcake at the Mara, um, which includes a chocolate cupcake with caramel filling. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, so the next one... 
This is at the, this is called the Rainbow Cookies and Cream Blondie, and it can be found both at the Beach Club Marketplace and the Market at Ale and Compass at Disney's Yacht Club and Disney's Beach Club Resorts. The Chewy Treat has chunks of chocolate cookies and rainbow sprinkles and is coated in white chocolate and then decorated with fondant and sparkling chocolate ears. And that's at Beach and Yacht Club. Three of the value resorts, along with Disney Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa, which is a deluxe, have an iridescent cupcake filled with cotton candy, marshmallow filling, and topped with raspberry buttercream. It's at the End Zone Food Court at Disney's All-Star Sports, World Premier Food Court at Disney's All-Star Movies, Intermission Food, Care for food Court at Disney's All-Star Music, and the Artist Palette at Saratoga Springs. And here is what that one looks like. They also just introduced a really cool Stitch cupcake at All-Star Sports, if you like Stitch. And then finally, the Mermaid cupcake that I've already showed you. Um, this is at Main Street Bakery at Magic Kingdom, and it's a vanilla cupcake topped with seafoam green buttercream icing, chocolate crispy pearls, sprinkles, and an iridescent mermaid tail cookie. There you go. Got to stick with the trend. Iridescent. All right. The long-awaited Jungle Cruise movie finally has a scheduled release date, and The Rock is in this movie, um, along with Maleficent 2, which Angelina Jolie is coming back to play Maleficent in that movie as well. Um, Disney has released an updated film release scheduled through 2021 this week. So Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt are in the Jungle Cruise movie. It's going to air, or it's going to come out October 11th of 2019. It had been in development for quite some time, and now it actually has a release date. Meanwhile, the follow-up to Maleficent, the live-action retelling of Sleeping Beauty from the antagonist point of view, will hit theaters on May 29th of 2020. Angelina Jolie returns as Maleficent along with Elle Fanning as Princess Aurora. Stars joining the sequel include Michelle Pfeiffer as Queen Ingrid, along with Chiwetel Ejiofor <laughs> and Ed Screen in a yet-to-be-announced role. Principal photography also began in late May on this movie. Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2 will now simply be known as Ralph Breaks the Internet. It comes out this November for Thanksgiving. The film will keep its November 21st, 2018 release date. Mary Poppins has been moved up. It was supposed to be released. Mary Poppins Returns was supposed to be released on Christmas Day of this year, but now it's been moved up to December 19th as release date for this year. Um, an untitled Disney live action film scheduled for November 8th of 2019 has been removed from the schedule. Indiana Jones 5 has been pushed back to July 9th of 2021. It was originally supposed to come out July 10th of 2020. This film takes the date of a yet to be announced Disney live action film that has been pushed back to July 30th of 2021. The previous mentioned untitled film replaces an untitled Marvel Studios film, which has been pushed up to February 12th of 2021. All right, so this week, I went to several trainings, like a bunch, <laughs> for Sandals and Royal Caribbean and, and um, all kinds of places. So one of the things I learned was that next year for 2019, Royal Caribbean does regular um, Alaskan cruises, as does uh, Disney Cruise Line, Norwegian Cruise Line. So you have several options if you're wanting to go on Alaskan cruise that I can help you book. But they announced for 2019, Ovation of the Seas, which is a quantum class ship that has been sailing in Asia and has a lot of technology on it. It, a lot of high tech on this particular Royal Caribbean ship is now going to be sailing a seven night and an 11 night itinerary in Alaska starting in 2019. Um, it has the North Star capsule on it that takes you 300 feet above the ship in a 360 degree see through capsule. Um, I don't think you could see better views of Alaska <laughs> than in that. Um, it has the Cplex, which has bumper cars and all kinds of fun activities in it. Um, it has the 270 Theater, it has the Royal Esplanade with lots of shopping, and then it has the Ripcord by iFly experience where you can skydive on your cruise ship in Alaska. So those are available on the Royal Caribbean Ovation of the Sea ship that will start sailing in Alaska next summer. 
Um, cruise to tours are available with those cruises to add on to the front of the cruise or at the end of the cruise. And you can choose how many nights you want to add on. But these are tours that go with your cruise and allow you to explore more internally Alaska as part of your Alaskan cruise experience. So you could make the seven night into an 11 night experience. Um, they explore Mount Denali, the Wilderness Express, the Husky Homestead. Um, you could land on a glacier in a helicopter and Alaskaya Resort is also part of that cruise tour. Mariner of the Seas is now sailing from Miami summer of this year through spring of 2019. It's three and four night Bahamian cruises that also include Coco Cay, which is their private island, as part of these sailings. So if you're wanting to go on a shorter weekend cruise in the Bahamas, Mariner of the Seas out of Miami is a good choice. And of course, they do the Deck the Holidays holiday cruises. They have decked out decor, Christmas crafts, games and parties, scavenger huts, and family story time on their holiday cruises at Royal Caribbean. And this is what I told you about. The new Stitch Cupcake at Disney's All-Star Sports Resort is really cute. And that is now available for a limited time. Halloween is coming to Disneyland Paris from October 1st to November 4th of 2018. So remember, they have a party at Disneyland Paris on October 31st. And we talked about those tickets go fast because it's their only party. But their season for Halloween at Disneyland Paris is October 1st through November 4th, where you can see all the decorations in the parks. Um, Halloween is not as big in Europe as it is here. So that is a big deal for them to have that stuff because really it's the only place you can go. <laughs> to see things like that in Europe. Um, okay, there's a new uh, Groot drink at Epcot at the Fife and Drum Tavern, which is this little outdoor tavern um, in the America Pavilion at the World Showcase at Epcot. And this is called uh, the I Am Float Root Beer Float <laughs> because he says, I am Groot. It's based on Groot's character. Here's what it looks like. Root Beer Float at the Fife and Drum. And it's got a little leaf in it. I guess that's what represents Groot and the brown color <laughs> wraps. Um, and that's available this summer while you have the whole American Garden Theater show, Galaxies, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy show there. Um, okay. This is another new trend. I have seen it in several places now, and now it's at Disney World. All-star sports or all-star resorts are changing the dessert game quite a bit. Yesterday, they came out with the iridescent cupcake, and now they have something even better, edible cookie dough. That's right, folks. You can order edible cookie dough in a cup from any of the all-star resorts as a snack credit, or you can pay out of pocket. It is $3.99. Edible cookie dough. Okay, so all cookie dough is edible. This one is actually safe to eat. There's no raw eggs in it. The flavor and texture of the cookie dough is present, so you won't feel like you're missing out on anything. They have a chocolate chip flavor with plenty of the chips mixed in. They give you three small scoops of the dough in a small cup, and for $3.99, it's actually a decent value. Um, so there you go. You can now order cookie dough in a cup. <laughs> So it starts out cold because I think they keep, it's almost like an ice cream consistency. They keep it pretty frozen until you order it. So they said wait until it, you know, melts a little bit before you start eating it. It'll be a much more enjoyable experience. But those of you who love cookie dough, which I see my mom definitely loving this one, <laughs> it does not have raw eggs in it. So it is going to be safe for you to eat. It's only $3.99 if you're paying it out of pocket. But if it's, if you're on the dining plan, it's a snack credit. So if you like cookie dough, you can now order it at all the all-star sports resorts as a snack credit. All the all-star resorts, I keep saying sports. Okay, <clears throat> Disney Cruise Line news. Disney Cruise Line is cruising Europe in 2019, and now there are two new ports of call in Sweden for the whole family. Um, let's see. There's a brand new Mediterranean itinerary from Rome and first time ports in Northern Ireland, Spain and France for 2019 on Disney Cruise Line. But now we're talking about two new ports of call in Sweden during the 2019 Northern Europe sailings. The first is the picturesque port town of Nyashman, <laughs> which provides a scenic gateway for guests to visit Stockholm, Sweden's vibrant capital city, boasting incredible medieval sites, lush parks, and a charming waterfront area. The second is Gothenburg, which is a diverse metropolis bursting with fun family activities and known for its breathtaking coastline and wondrous archipelago and world-class dining. So those are two new ports in Sweden for 2019 Disney Cruise Line sailings. 
Okay, here's a little bit more detail about each. Nyashman is a small modern town that offers some impressive sites of its own, plus access to the rich history, art, and culture of Stockholm. Here are some tips for making the most out of your day at port. Before heading to the big city, don't miss your chance to check out some of the area's famous Viking rune stones. There are 27 of these ancient structures, and you can find several of them along the old road between... I don't know. It starts with a D and van step. <laughs> when you arrive in Stockholm, spend some time exploring the medieval streets of Gamla Stan, the city's old town. Brimming with heritage and charm, the area is home to marvelous places, palaces, and mansions, and centuries-old churches and cathedrals. Be sure to visit one or two of Stockholm's 100-plus museums devoted to the preservation and display of European paintings, sculptures, and handicrafts. Two of the most popular are the renowned National Museum, which houses 16,000 paintings and 30,000 other works of art, including pieces by masters like Rembrandt, Alexander Rosslyn, and Carl Larson, and the Vasa Museum, which was specially built to preserve the world's oldest ship, along with the 40,000 fascinating objects that were discovered with the vessel after 333 years at the bottom of the city harbor. Take a tour of Stadtschut, which is Stockholm City Hall, um, which has stood as a marvel of modern architecture since its completion in 1923. One of the daily tours will take you through two glorious main courts, the handsome council chamber and the Blue Hall, home of the Nobel Prize banquet. The Disney Magic will call on Neishman during one special seven-night Northern European cruise from Copenhagen on August 1st of 2019. The second largest city is Gothenburg in Sweden and has a world-class lineup of fine art, food, and fun for the whole family. Go island hopping and explore the Gothenburg Archipelago, a chain of more than 20 islands teeming with beautiful beaches, delightful villages, and boating and fishing excursions. Choose from Gothenburg's many family activities. There's something for everyone at the country's most popular amusement park, Leesburg, which has a magnificent sculpture garden and fantastic themed rides. Kids will also love the Universium Science Center, where they can go on a rainforest safari, step into a space station and conduct an experiment in a science lab. Families will also enjoy a visit to the Garden Society of Gothenburg, which is a verdant park abounding with tiny cafes and flowers. Experience Gothenburg from a waterside perspective from on board a Swedish paddon boat. A paddon boat tour is a lovely leisurely way to explore the city's quiet canals, low bridges, and picturesque streets. Visit the Gothenburg Museum of Art to see the city's foremost art collection. These have works of uh, French Impressionists, as well as Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Picasso, and Scandinavian masters like Edvard Munch and Carl Larsen. Gothenburg is a featured port of call during two sailings in 2019, an 11-night Norwegian Fords and Iceland cruise from Dover on July 21st, and a seven-night Northern Europe cruise from Dover on August 18th. So those are the new ports of call in Sweden for Disney Cruise Line. Okay. Just announced today, Adventures by Disney vacation packages can be booked within 45 days of you returning from your most recent Adventure by Disney trip. If you book them within 45 days of returning from your most recent trip at the price that, like at the regular price, not at a discount, you'll receive $250 per person on select land and river cruise departures or $150 per person on select long weekend, short escape, and Disney Cruise Line vacation packages. This offer is valid on any 2018 or 2019 departure. So we can book any available departure of an Adventures by Disney itinerary at the non-discounted prevailing price as quoted on, on adventuresbydisney.com on the date of booking no later than 45 days following the end of your Adventures by Disney trip, and you can receive either the $250 per person off the regular rate of any available Adventures by Disney land package, other than Adventures by Disney long weekend escape or short weekend escape packages. And then you can also get... Um, $250 per person off the regular rate of any available Adventures by Disney River Cruise package, excluding suites and category A, AA, AB, AP, BA, and E staterooms, or $150 per person off the regular rate of any available Adventures by Disney long weekend package or short escape package. That's five days or four nights or shorter. All right, so this is bookable through me. After you get back from your Adventures by Disney uh, trip, which I also probably planned. So <laughs> just let me know. All right. I believe that is the end of our news for today. Let me double check. No, wait. Yes. I already talked about this. <laughs> it was the Prince Charming Carousel refurbishment. Yep. Okay. I think we're good for today. 
So that is it from Dallas. Hopefully you enjoyed my Hotel Transylvania 3 review along with my little squishy buddies that I got for being an AMC Premier member. AMC doesn't give me any commission, but I highly recommend AMC because they have lowered their prices and they give free stuff <laughs> to their members. So, and I think I paid like what, $11.99 a year for the premiere membership, but it's awesome. And that movie was so cute and no foul language and no taking the Lord's name in vain, unlike the Incredibles 2 movie. So I enjoyed it. Um, it's PG, but again, unless your kids are scared of the monsters, which they're all pretty friendly, you know, but unless they're scared of them, um, they should be okay. So that's totally up to you. You can watch the other Hotel Transylvania movies and kind of judge from those, but it was cute and I really enjoyed it. So talk to you guys next week. Thanks so much for joining me in Dallas. Bye.